Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another installment of It's Not You, It's M.E., my series of videos about the mission editor in DCS. Um, in this series, we kind of started out by just making a simple mission, and then we covered a number of topics in more detail, including how to use zones and set up basic AI units, and some basic units, uh, uses of the trigger system, um, and some more involved concepts like how to randomize uh, some of the features of a mission. Well, now I'd like to kind of go back and put it all together and talk about how to make a more complicated mission. It's still a single player mission and certainly not as complex as you can get, but it is a fairly complex mission with multiple AI units, maybe both enemy and friendly, and quite a few different trigger techniques. So as an example, I'm actually going to use a mission that I recently released called A Bridge Too Far. It's part of the series of videos I've been doing on Marine Corps A4s in Vietnam, and if you hadn't checked out those videos, you really should. Anyway, I think this is a good mission to use uh, as a sample complex, simple player mission because it has a bunch of elements that all have to be made to work together to make it work for the player. So uh, first things first, let's talk about the process of making a mission. Now, everyone is probably going to have their own process. I'm going to talk about mine, not because it's the only way or even the best way to do it, but because I think it'll be easier for you to follow along if you understand something about, um, you know, the process that I'm following. And even before that, I think we need to talk a little bit about the point or kind of the objective of the mission. Um, and that, uh, that, for me, I mean, at least, it is, it's important to understand what I want or what I want the player who plays the mission to get out of the mission. Like, it could just be a simple training mission, it could be a mission that's supposed to be a real challenge, or it could be an attempt to make, like, a historical reenactment of real events, that sort of thing. This mission is kind of in the last category, although obviously there are a lot of things that we can't simulate accurately, uh, including being in Vietnam. But what I really wanted the mission to do was kind of tell a story, one that was at least mostly based on the Vietnam experience, but that was focused on kind of letting the player, you know, take on a character, play the mission that way. Um, this is important because there's a couple of places in the mission design where deciding to stick to uh, sort of story mode will affect the way um, I make the mission. So I wanted to cover that. But um, with that in mind, uh, let's talk about the basic steps that I went through and that, you know, I usually go through um, in making a mission. So step one is what I call write the script. And, and by that, I mean, you, if it's going to be kind of a story-based mission, you kind of have to figure out what the storyline is going to be. What, uh, you know, what's the start, middle, and end of the mission going to be like, and what's the player going to do? Uh, the second step is really to, um, let's call it, set the scene. And by that, I mean figuring out uh, you know, where all of the enemy and friendly pieces need to go, and also, in this case, uh, doing some modifications of the basic map. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, then step number three is really testing the AI. Because if you have any uh, extensive AI pieces in the mission, um, you really do need to figure out if they behave the way you want them to or how to effectively program them to behave the way you want them to. And that is going to definitely require doing some testing. And I find it's easier to try and do that before you actually put uh, the player or put yourself in the mission. Um, now, for the purposes of making a video about this mission, this is actually the point where I actually sat down and worked out uh, what I needed some other uh, characters to be saying. And then I asked some, some other guys to help me with some voiceovers. And I wrote them some script for their lines and sent them out to the guys who volunteered to help. But that's not really part of making the mission. It is part of making the video, which is something we can talk about. So the next step is to basically refine the mission based on the testing that you do once you're doing it with just the AI. Um, and then you have to add the player uh, to the mission. And then you actually have to start getting in the mission and flying it. So you have to test fly the mission. And then usually there's a little bit more tweaking uh, including now you got to try and make sure you get all the messages in the right place and all the radio items and all of the little sort of details uh, that the player is actually, you know, that have to do with actually having a player in the mission. Then it's time to do some final checks. 
Uh, and then finally, at least for me, I need to fly a version of the mission um, that I think is good enough for the video, and then I record a track of that. Um, and then I finalize the mission and release it, in my case, to my Discord server or to the user file site um, on Eagle Dynamics. Now, of course, if I'm making a video of the mission, um, that is kind of a whole process unto itself, and one that I was thinking maybe it was about time that I make a video about. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video about actually making videos. Okay, so with this process in mind, let's get started on making a bridge too far. So part of writing the script was actually to do a little bit of background research uh, because the operation described in the mission, Operation Starlight, was a real operation. It was basically the first major ground operation undertaken by the U.S. Marines in Vietnam, and it happened in the summer of 1965, right after the Marines occupied the base at Chu Lai. It was uh, essentially an operation to clear out a concentration of Viet Cong irregular troops from an area of villages close to the Chu Lai base. And it did involve several Marine battalions, as well as ARVN troops. And of course, it was supported by A-4s flying out of Chu Lai. Now, as I described in a couple of previous videos, I have adopted the Batumi area of the Caucasus map to stand in for Chu Lai in this series of videos. And so just north of Batumi, there's a nice little area around these two rivers and this old air base. And it looked like it would be a good place uh, to stand in for the area of Van Tuong, which is the area that was the objective of Operation Starlight. Now, I had actually, uh, by the time I got to this video, I had already made a video about some of the early sort of preparatory attacks for Operation Starlight. Uh, this was called Little Round Top. So in our story progression, I'd gotten to the point where the Marines were pretty much ready to start the assault. And I knew I was going to make a mission about doing close air support uh, for the actual attack. And this eventually became a video called Troops in Contact, if you want to check that out. Um, but before I did that, I wanted to do more of a kind of a battlefield inter interdiction mission, kind of a more traditional A4 mission of attacking targets on the ground. Now, because the target area was pretty close to the airbase, I realized that if I just took off and bombed a couple of bridges, eh, the mission was going to be pretty short and probably pretty boring. So I came up with the idea of making a full package strike where there would be some flak suppression elements as well as multiple elements to attack the bridges. And I decided I would give the player the role of being kind of the quarterback, basically coordinating the other attacks so that part of the mission would actually be to try and fly around and observe the target area over the course of several attacks rather than just making one attack on a target. So that was the basic script that I had in mind. And so I took a look at the map and identified an area with several bridges. And I came up with a storyline um, that the point of the mission was going to be to isolate the enemy in the area between these two rivers prior to the main assault. So at this point, I had a basic outline that sounded something like this. Uh, player starts on the ground, taking off as the last element in a multi-element strike. Player flies to the AO. Player calls in the AI flak suppressors and observes their runs. And this gives him a chance to see where all of the AAA is. Then the player calls in the other strike element and observes their results. And then the player decides how to attack whatever targets are left based on what he's seen. And finally, he actually goes and attacks one or more of the bridges himself. And then basically we're done. So, now I needed to start setting the scene, uh, including where to put the friendly and the enemy AI units. But I also had to set the scene in terms of how it was going to look, which means both the weather and actually some modifications to the actual terrain. Uh, for the weather, I decided that I wanted to go with overcast, because A, that's actually pretty typical of weather in Vietnam uh, at this time of year. And also because, frankly, it's a bit of a change for me, I typically do something with fairly clear skies. You know, I kind of like the lighting better. Um, so I wanted to switch it up a little bit and try something with overcast. And the other thing is that I figured that putting an overcast ceiling at around, you know, 8,000 feet or so was going to make the mission a little bit more of a challenge 
because you'd have to fly a little bit lower while you're trying to observe the targets. And also it would mean that you wouldn't be able to do high altitude attacks because you'd have to roll in, you know, no higher than 8,000 feet. Um, so the light AAA was definitely going to be more of a factor than it would be if I let the player attack from a higher altitude. So uh, the other thing I needed to do was take a look at terrain modification. And you may not be aware, but there is, are a couple of triggers that will let you effectively either remove or destroy all the scenery in a zone that you define. So you can use this to actually modify the map uh, before the mission starts. So basically it was just a matter of looking at the map and deciding what I wanted to take out. And I decided I wanted to take out pretty much all of the big buildings, at least the multi-story ones. But I needed to make sure that I didn't take out the bridges or some of the other features since they were going to be targets or, or kind of important. So it took a bit of experimentation to figure out how close to the bridges I could define a zone and not have the bridge actually disappear. And actually having those new polygonal zones uh, from DCS version 2.7 really came in handy. Uh, and then it was just a matter of putting the trigger in to run at the start of the mission to do the train modification, which eventually looked kind of like this. And as you can see, I opted to remove just the scenery, not the trees. Now, you should note that this technique isn't perfect in that it leaves the ground textures in place, even though it removes the buildings. But at a distance, it, le look, it looks at least a little like what I hoped fields around villages in central Vietnam would look like, or at least closer to that than the original scenery did, anyways. Okay, so now we had the landscape and the weather sorted out in terms of setting the scene. The next step was to start placing enemy and friendly units. And of course, um, the only units that I really cared about, at least enemy units, was AAA. So um, here I kind of uh, was trying to find a balance. I wanted there to be enough AAA that the player would feel like there was a lot of flack around, but I didn't want to make it impossible to complete the mission. Uh, I also wanted to place the AAA in kind of uh, realistic concentrations, which basically means using batteries of four guns, either 23 millimeter or 40 millimeter, because at least from the reading I've done, that's pretty much the way they tended to occur when they were used in Vietnam. So what I decided to do in the end was to place a few batteries around the bridges, and these would actually be very dangerous to the player when he was going after the bridges, and then I was going to place some other batteries that were farther away and have them, you know, kind of generate a barrage um, that the player would be able to see, but which ultimately would not really be all that dangerous if the player was careful about the way they flew the mission. So here's an example of what I mean by, you know, going to story mode. I, I wanted the player to feel like he was flying in a high uh, AAA area in the Vietnam era, but I didn't want him to actually have to spend all of his time trying to dodge the flak. So uh, I wanted the player to feel like uh, flak was a problem, but I also wanted to manage exactly how much of a danger it was so the mission wouldn't be impossible. And you can see the original setup that I came up with here. Now, it actually changed several times over the course of designing the mission, and you'll see where we end up a little bit later. But um, this is what I started with. Now, finally, I needed to plan the friendly AI elements, uh, which in this case are basically just other A4s. Originally, I went with a two-ship flight uh, for the flak suppressors and a two-ship flight for the bridge bombers, other than the one that the player was going to be. Um, you will see as we go along that this got tweaked as part of the AI testing, uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about why that was when we get there. Uh, now, I gave them, at this point, I gave them both the same loiter station here, and I called it Whiskey. Uh, and I figured that basically the player would take off and loiter offshore of the target area, and then he'd call in the other elements from Whiskey uh, one at a time. Um, so now I basically had the basic script and the basic staging done, and it was time to start seeing how to make it all fit together. Um... But that involves actually a fair bit of time testing the AI 
And I think maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wrap this video up here. Uh, I'll make another video soon, uh, and it's probably going to be a lot about the AI testing. Uh, anybody who has experimented with trying to get the, the AI to do very specific things in DCS um, will know that it does uh, have its excitements trying to do that. Uh, it is definitely one of the parts of the DCS Mission Editor that is very much an acquired taste. Um, it is possible to get good results. Um, I won't say that it's not, um, but um, it does usually take a fair bit of work and a little bit of frustration along the way, I'm not going to lie. Um, so I think it's best to really start off the next video on talking about how to try to tune both the friendly and the enemy AI to get the effect that I was looking for. I wanted the uh, friendly AI planes to attack the targets that I wanted them to, and I wanted the enemy flak to react the way that I wanted them to, um, you know, essentially to to give a good impression, to tell the kind of story that I was looking for, because that's really what we're after here. Wasn't trying to recreate this accurately or assess the performance of the AAA or the aircraft or the weapons accurately. I was trying to uh, get them to tell a story that the player could be part of. Anyways, um, let me know what you think of this video so far. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about uh, any of the stuff that I talked about so far or anything you want to know more about the mission uh, A Bridge Too Far. And hey, uh, it's up on my Discord server, so if you want to, feel free to go give it a try um, so you know what we're talking about. As always, please feel free to come by the Discord server, talk about anything you want to, and uh, for now, this is going to be Sidekick. Signing off.